yippee ki Die Hard turns 30 years old today. And this is not only one of the greatest Christmas films ever made, it's the greatest action film ever made in history. Just look at Die Hard's influence, not only on the sequels over numerous decades, but action films. Hell, even the recent skyscraper film with The Rock is a Die Hard ripoff. You also have toy soldiers, masterminds, under siege, die hard on a boat. Speed, die hard on a bus. White House down, Olympus has fallen, cliffhanger. So many films have been influenced by die hard. It's just crazy how influential this film is. And I actually had an action reaction of die hard on my channel you can check out, but here I'm gonna bring over my favorite moments and ultimately the influence of this film. What makes it is Bruce Willis. He was starring in Moonlighting at the time and was in this film. He was paid $5 million. And you had other actors considered. Don Johnson was almost John McClane. That would have been crazy. But I love Bruce Willis in this. He brings a certain amount of charisma, a likability. He's a smart ass, but most of all, he's a regular human being, and that makes him different from any other action hero. He gets hurt, he bleeds, he gets tired, he gets angry. That's so different from like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, or even Jean-Claude Van Damme back in the 80s. Bruce Willis was a modern action hero. He was just a man, and that's what ultimately makes his movie as relevant today as it was 30 years ago. We also have the late, great Alan Rickman as Hans Gruber. This was his first film, his Hollywood debut. He mostly acted in the theater, and he was kind of skeptical about this role. He didn't want to take it because he didn't want to become typecast as the villain. Luckily, he added a lot more to the role than just a two-dimensional villain. He created one of the most iconic movie villains of all time that we have ever seen in an action film. And again, you can see the influence of Hans Gruber in action films, just like John McClane. This movie is so revolutionary to what it did for the action genre. I love that scene where John McClane and Hans Gruber meet for the first time, and he starts speaking in an American accent instead of a German one. Such a brilliant scene. Where he's just like, you think I'm stupid, Hans? And he's like, you were saying. He's like, shoot the glass. I love that. Their final encounter where he's just like, what was it you said to me? Oh yeah. Yippee ki -yay, motherfucker. And they're just laughing. He has the tape and it's like, ha ha ha, Holly Moo! I love that. The guy he fought with, that was such a crazy fight. He killed that guy's brother. Him just going level by level, taking out each of Han Gruber's men one by one. And who could forget, the quarterback is toast. So many great lines in this film. And you also have Reginald Vell Johnson as Sergeant Al Powell. And who could forget Bonnie Bedelia as Holly Gennaro or Holly McLean. But most of all, let's not forget John McTernan's direction. He directed an awesome movie. It's no wonder that the only other Die Hard he directed, Die Hard with a Vengeance, turns out to be the best sequel. Also, he did classics like Humphrey and October, Predator, and Last Action Hero. He is a fantastic director, and this was based on a book, Nothing Lasts Forever. Clint Eastwood had the rights to it for a while and was going to star in it in the early 80s. And ended up becoming Die Hard, and I think that's what works, is that it was based on previous source material. The only Die Hard not to be based on previous source material was A Good Day to Die Hard, and as we saw, it wasn't such a good day. There's just something that every Die Hard sequel and every action movie made tries to capture from Die Hard, but just fails. And it's because it's that lightning in a bottle, it's that magic that Die Hard is. It was an independent movie in a way. I mean, it was an expensive movie, but it wasn't as uh, big budget as other action movies at the time. They filmed Nakatomi Plaza at 20th Century Fox. They used models, different things like that. And I think the seclusion of it, just in one building in one night, added a lot to the story and atmosphere with the great storytelling and characters. The terrorists were also much more three-dimensional. They weren't just terrorists. They were kind of like robbers, basically. It was a heist movie. Practically, they were trying to steal the vault of Nakatomi Plaza. And that was so great that they added that element in there. They weren't your generic villains. They were, like, even though they're evil, and you kind of want John McClane to get them, there's something that's very likable about them, including Hans Gruber. Who could forget Clay, where he's just like, Han, Bubby, I'm your white knight. That was ad-libbed. Alan Rickman was actually caught off guard there, but I love that. It was just like, Clay, tell him you don't know me. <laughs> and they shoot him, poor guy. But uh, 
so many great lines in this film. I really love Die Hard, and yeah, 30 years later, this is just an amazing film. I love Reginald Vell Johnson and Bruce Willis, their banter back and forth, him arguing with the police chief, Agent Johnson and Johnson arriving from the FBI, just everything. It has a momentum to it, and who could forget the beginning? It's like one of those rare Christmas movies in Los Angeles, but you have him arriving there, he's just like freaking California. And it's great seeing that dynamic. He has marriage problems. His wife basically went on to go get a job. He's a New York cop, so he's a fish out of water, basically, in every way possible. But yet, he's the person that does the job right, and it's almost like it's because he has to. He's the only person that can do something, and he doesn't want to be there. There's that famous scene in the ventilation shaft where he's just like, eh, I can have a couple of drinks, a few laughs. It's a fantastic scene. And yeah, that scene where he misses was actually the stuntman missing for real. In the original script, he was supposed to jump and actually land. The guy missed, and they used the footage of Bruce Willis landing to cut it, so they made it seem like he fell and then caught another one. Such a great, great shot, great editing. Man, they do not make movies like they used to. And yeah, no matter how many action movies are made, no matter how many movies try to be die hard, there is only one die hard. And 30 years later, it is still the best action film ever made. And I'm going to go ahead and go on a limb here and say the next 30 years is still going to be considered one of the greatest, if not the greatest, action film ever made after 60 years. And yeah, there's supposed to be another Die Hard with Bruce Willis. It's going to be like year zero, before and after. I don't know, but I hope the story's right and that they can end it because really... The only Die Hard I like after this is with a vengeance, and Live Free or Die Hard and Die Hard 2 had their moments, but there's only been one really good sequel, and yeah, they're they're not Die Hard. <laughs> die Hard 2 shows us that, like he tried to be in Washington DC airport, they tried to recreate everything in the first one, and, and they just couldn't. So there's only one Die Hard. So if you have never seen Die Hard, do yourself a service and watch it. Seriously. If you have seen Die Hard, which most likely you have, let me know your thoughts of the film and let me know your experiences of when you first saw the film. I first saw this on HBO. It was Die Hard and Die Hard with a Vengeance back to back on July 4th and that's when I first saw the film and I instantly fell in love with this. This is just a phenomenal film, an American movie classic, so yeah. Definitely uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Here are some Die Hard videos you can enjoy on my channel. I reviewed the first three films. And yeah, like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. You can also follow me on the Stardust app at Fred Film Fanatic. Till next time.